G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. A bit of a uh, tear down here, not a tear down. What I want to do now, I'm working on this digital standard definition FPV systems. It may be enhanced resolution, not standard or enhanced definition, not standard definition. Not sure yet. Depends on some of the design decisions that have to be made in order to keep it affordable, simple, small, lightweight, and so forth. So we'll see what happens. I've looked at a lot of chipsets. I've looked online at so many different video encoders, decoders, um, converters, and all sorts of things. So yeah, I'm, before I finally commit to a design, I had a bit of a thought. Hey, what if we could repurpose something like what's in here? Now, in theory, this is great because it has analog inputs. It converts the analog data into digital format. Then it compresses it before it stores it on an SD card. Because yes, this is a DVR. This is not a particularly good DVR. It's a pretty crap DVR. But imagine, if you will, that we use most of the stuff except the SD card. If we were to take the, the, the core operational functionality in here, so we're going to take our analog video, we're going to convert it to digital, and then we're going to take the output that would normally go to an SD card and send it through our radio frequency link, through our 5.8 gigahertz transmitter link. Hmm, wouldn't that save an awful lot of messing around, having to reinvent the wheel? Because most of the technology is in here. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to have a look in here and see what they're using in terms of chipsets. One of the problems that we have with a lot of this kit coming out of China is that they either uh, scrape off the chip markings or it's some woggy chip that you cannot get any information on without signing away your firstborn child and uh, you know all sorts of non-disclosure stuff so hopefully hopefully however we'll find something that may be of use in here but yeah enough talking let's pull it apart now i have reviewed this thing before i'm pretty sure i put a review up on my channel and one thing i just remembered as i started to pull it apart it has got the worst mechanical design in the world because all these little buttons fall out and even then you can't get the damn thing out it's got a little lead that's right there's a little lead in here which has to come out how I don't know, it's like crap. Who designed this piece of rubbish? It's got a screw in here which is wedged in and there's a wire soldered to it. So here we go. Low tech solutions to high tech problems. Snip, yay. Now we can get it out hopefully. But then again, it doesn't want to come out. What the hell's going on here? What the, who, who? In, oh, I seem to recall I didn't give this a very good review. I can see why there's a big piece of foam stopping it coming this way. Oh, we've got it, righty-o, there we go. Let's take a closer look at the circuit board and see what chips have been used and whether or not maybe we could repurpose one of these chips for the purposes of our digital FPV system. Okay, this appears to be the chip that has all the tasty video goodness in it. This I think is just a RAM chip. I'm not sure, I haven't looked them up yet. But this chip here appears to be the one that's going to do all the hard work. So I'm going to get online, have a look and see if I can find. I probably won't be able to find much for this chip because again, it's probably some woggy thing. But hey, we'll have a look and it is Quite a nice chip, it's fairly small. What's that? It's probably a 16, 16, 32, 64 pin. No, it might be more than that. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very fine pitched um, component, but you can solder these manually quite successfully. Um, so I'm gonna have a look and uh, these are just video amplifiers by the look of it, yeah, RAM chip. Power supply over here. Um, it's a fairly simple device on the back. We've got pretty much just a whole lot of capacitors here, which uh, bypass, we've got a little crystal there, there's a little battery backup there. Um, another crystal there, so and a whole lot of switches. So this isn't rocket science. Uh, this should be a relatively easy thing to figure out what's going on here. Probably, um, yeah, I think this was about a $30 DVR, so it's not expensive, but this could be the heart, because remember the other aspect, the other side of this, which we also want, is that this chip will take video, it will, it will turn analog from these inputs here, from these inputs along here, it'll turn these analog inputs into a digital signal in here. It will then compress that signal using, I don't know if it's motion JPEG or, or um, MPEG or H.264, it's probably a bit old for H.264, but it'll be a compressed video signal, which means less bandwidth required, more channels in the available bandwidth, more video transmitters going at once. Uh, and then it normally just dumps it out here into this card. So if we can intercept the signal from here and actually, you know, we may just be able to tap into these lines here and then packet this up and send it to the other end. Once it gets to the other end, of course, we can take be the equivalent of reading the SD card. We can take the signal that we've received and whack it into that chip. And in theory, we will get a, an analog output here. You can plug into your video goggles. Which way am I going? I'm, <laughs> here we go. An analog signal here. You can plug into your video goggles or your LCD screens. Oh, you know, got to think outside the box here. Let's take a bit of a look. I'm going to get online now, see if I can find this component here in the wonderful world of the Google webs. Well, knock me down with a feather. I found a data sheet for this thing, and it's called the SQ606 Digital CCTV Processor. 
exactly what we're looking for exactly more or less <laughs> now this is dated 2005 it's a really old chip which um i'll see if it's still able to be purchased and um, sometimes when chips get pretty old they get pretty cheap but often they just get dropped from a product line so we may not be able to source this one but we'll just walk through this just to show you what i'm talking about in terms of uh, repurposing this chip for our digital fpv system and the benefits that it would give us if we could do this right so here we go where's the oh, i'm gonna find the right buttons here because here we go um, first of all, let's see if we can find a block. Well, let's look. General description. It's an integrated and cost-effective digital CCTV processor for DIY home security systems. It can not only support the standard CCIR656 input and interface to major brands of television decoders, but also transmit input images into JPEG, motion JPEG format, based on the embedded high-efficiency JPEG encoder engine. So it's got software, or it's got hardware-based compression. Uh, built into it. So it's going to enable us to take a very, very large frame of video and make it much smaller, which means we can transmit it using less bandwidth, which is really important. Um, okay, so now we move on. It says um, it's ideal for real-time video display in NTSC or PAL format and a whole lot of other stuff. We're not interested in such as motion detect. It says here, which is really, really good, um, in addition to the featured hardware and firmware functions, the C++ pro programming platform is able to simplify the development on firmware platform and speed up overall development schedule so there are tools or at least there were tools for this chip which enabled you to customize it change the way it works internally using c that sounds very very promising indeed now let's go down see there should be a functional block diagram in this data sheet somewhere i have to use the right buttons reach around sorry i don't have a screen capture i'm just using the camera on the screen which makes it look really crap oh, i'm pressing the wrong buttons again here we go is there a ah here we go here's a block diagram shows us the bits that are in there and so we can see what we're doing right core to this whole thing here is obviously the jpeg codec that enables us to take our large raw data frame and compress it down into something much smaller which means we can transmit it without using the entire band just for our own purposes more people on the band basically more channels in the given amount of space brilliant excellent that's perfectly good even better this is actually a jpeg or a motion jpeg codec now we could use an MPEG codec or an H.264 codec, but there's some subtle, some very important differences for what we're doing here. I don't want, or well, we want to have this low latency. So we don't want to use really, really slow compression techniques. We want a simple one. And the motion JPEG is uber simple. It can be very, very fast, especially when it's implemented in silicon like is on this chip. So it means minimum latency. But even more important, most of the high compression, you know, the video codecs, the formats which squeeze the video files down to they're really really small most of them use what we call iframes and, and delta frames well i'm getting complicated here but basically an iframe is when the system takes an entire entire picture takes the whole frame and stores it so everything that's on the frame is stored then what they do is they implement delta frames and delta just means difference so what happens is you have a frame that shows everything and the next frame in the sequence is just the difference between whatever the camera saw next and whatever was in that first iframe the following frame again is a difference between the, so each frame from the iframe onwards becomes the difference between successive frames until you get to the point where obviously the differences would exceed the uh, the the you know, sort of storing the whole frame again so then you have another iframe so you have one real frame a whole lot of different frames another real frame a whole lot of different frames another real frame the problem is that if your if your iframe gets hit by noise or lost then all the frames that follow up to the next iframe cannot be decoded because they're based on rubbish or if you get a glitch of noise halfway through the iframe sequence, uh, sorry, the, the delta frame sequence, then the following frames are lost right up to the next iframe. So basically it means that it's very sensitive to noise and data loss if you use H.264 or MPEG. This system, each frame is stored in, an, in its entirety. So if you lose a frame, you've only lost that frame and it's not going to affect following frames. So this is much more robust for the purposes of a digital FPV system. This looks like a cracker little chip. So um, we have there's a CPU in here which we can program with C++. Excellent. We can, and we have these functional blocks. We've got our SD RAM controller. We're not too worried about that. The only RAM we need is enough to buffer one or two frames, enough for the um, codec to do its job. So we don't need gigabytes of memory, right? Um, then we've got a decoder here for the input video input that decodes it into digital format on this bus. This is a bus which is like you know it's a connection between all these blocks. We have an image scaler, which is interesting. They've spelled scaler wrong, which means we can actually scale the image up or down if we want to. Probably won't want to do that, just more time wasted. 
We have a USB connection here, which okay for updating bits and pieces, whatever. I don't know why, we probably won't use the USB, but it's there if we need to. Here's a GPU, now, it's a graphics processing unit, which enables us to do some stuff such as OSD and other things. Uh, we probably, we may use that. We could, <laughs> in theory, um, whack some extra stuff in there. I don't think, well, maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. Something to look at, but basic, bare bones, we're not going to use the OSD controller. Then we have an encoder, which will take all this digital stuff and turn it back into analog before poking it out, uh, or it'll take it through to a TV encoder and send it out as a PAL or an NTSC signal. So we've got all these functional blocks here. And we can, by reprogramming with the C++ language, hopefully just shift them around and do what we want to do. So all we want is we want our signal to come in, to be converted to digital, to be compressed, to go back out again, and then we have what's down here, GPIO. This is just general purpose input output, which means we can then stream the digital signal out here straight into our video transmitter, our, our digital side of the video transmitter, which will then modulate the carrier and give us the transmission. So in theory, everything but the radio frequency stuff is in this chip. Fantastic. This is like brilliant stuff. So um, there's probably not enough on this data sheet. These tend to be very short form data sheets. So if we keep going down, there's the chip itself. A lot of connections. How many is it? I don't know. 176 pin device. Um, sometimes these are available in different packages, but 176 pins, that's a lot. Um, it's something you can solder if you know what you're doing by hand, but I would think that this is going to require us to either um, have a module made where this is all basically soldered in place, or you're going to have to know what you're doing. So probably what we'll look at doing here, and manufacturers hopefully will run with this. They'll, they'll do, take care of this, making the old, all the hardware, but um, there we go. And then there's a list of what all the pins do, which is kind of, you know, we don't need to know that because um, what we do need to know is about the programming interface. Here's the electrical specifications. These are often quite useful. This will run on 3 volts. It's a 3 volt system, or 3.3 volts, which is an industry standard. 3.3 volts, that's fine. Um, what have we got here? Uh, input voltage, junction temperature, power supply. Doesn't really tell us very much. It'll run down to, oh no, that's just the inputs and output signals. No, that's all we get. <laughs> so it's 176 LQFP package. Um, we would need a lot more information to use this chip. We can reverse engineer some of it, but to reprogram the chip to do what we want to do, I will need a full data sheet. Hopefully this device is still available. I don't know. I'll have to do some more checking. If it is, I will spend a lot more time playing around with this and hopefully get a software developer's kit for it and see where we go. This could be brilliant, but I, again, I fear that having originally been designed in 2005, which is like 13 years ago, it's probably old stuff. It's no longer made. It'll be superseded by something else. Um, so if I can find the functional equivalent, but the problem is as things get better, they tend to be more sophisticated, harder to hack, harder to use. But we live in hope. We live in hope that I'll find this. So I just wanted to keep you up to date with what's happening here, let you see that there's work going on in the background. Now, the other approach for this is to just use off-the-shelf components, so video um, analog to digital converters and then encoders. But there's, there's usually a lot more chips because each chip is a separate function rather than being all nicely integrated like this thing where everything's on the one piece of silicon. I will keep looking and see what I can find. But if I can use this chip, then hey, this could be a really, really cool. Make this whole thing so simple and also keep the cost really low because it says it's low cost and they wouldn't lie, would they? There you go. Right. That's enough for this video. Um, my Patreon supporters will have seen this video before everybody else and they'll have seen it without any ads because they're nice people and they send me money every month and I like to reward them for that. The rest of you, if you're watching it now, you'll have seen one ad at the beginning because that's all you get thanks to the Patreon supporters. But wait, look, I found a supplier. Hopefully I found a supplier. Let me uh, I'll turn off this. I don't want, no, go away, not now. Um, uh, here we are, the SQ606B-L and it says Unit price from 50 cents to, I assume that's $4 per unit. Minimum of 2,000 units. That's not a problem because if you like 50 cents, um, that's like $1,000. Um, and that's an awful lot of these chips. So you need two per system, one at the receiver, one at the transmitter. So that's, that becomes 1,000 digital FPV systems. That's more than I want to make, but um, it gives us an idea of price wise. I may search for lower quantity providers, uh, but we're looking here, you know, um, what is it, half a dollar? Half a US dollar. Cheap as beans, because most of the other chips I looked at, the ones that were like dedicated video encoders and things, they were getting up around the 12, 15 US dollars a chip. And they were just part of the solution. This is almost the entire solution. So this is looking pretty good. I will have a bit more of a hunt around. Now the next big problem could be the software development kit for this particular component. It's made by a company called SQL, so I'm going to have to hunt that out. But that's for the next video. Let you know how I get on. In the meantime, thank you for watching again. And this time, I'm going. I promise. Bye. Thumbs up, thumbs down.
whatever.